Dead bodies found on his Lynn County, Kansas farm. 19-year-old Lisa Stacy and her daughter Tiffany. They've been missing since 1985. Johnson County Prosecutor Paul Morrison says the Midwest family who thought they legally adopted this little girl, Tiffany Stacy, 15 years ago, was duped, allegedly by John E. Robinson. What do you want to find out about your biological mom? I want to find out where she is. I want to know who she was. I just, I know nothing of my mother. That's haunted me my entire life. Do you believe you will find out? Yeah. I know I will. I'll find her. Today's itinerary is right now I'm awake and conscious and getting some caffeine in me. We are then proceeding to O'Hare where we're going to land in Kansas City. The first step on Heather's journey was going back to where this story began, Kansas City, where her mother was born, where her mother was killed, and where a lot of these answers hopefully were for her. I really hope that we can find at least the location of Lisa, where he put her, at least I think for Heather to be able to say goodbye. Thanks again for flying with us. Hope you enjoy your stay in Kansas City. We are here to meet Paul Morrison, who was the district attorney who tried against John here in Kansas. Hey, hey. it's very nice to meet you finally. Very nice to meet you. Do you think in your experience I'll find where she is if I keep pursuing Maybe. it? Maybe. I, I Stranger think, things have happened. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, especially nowadays with advances in technology, I think you should. Yeah. This is a picture of Heather just a few months after she was born, but she's not Heather here. She's Tiffany. Her name and the entire course of her life changes because of a man named John Robinson. John Robinson was a very interesting man, originally from Chicago area. John Robinson was born in 1943 in Cicero, Illinois, and grew up in a somewhat working class neighborhood there. From everything we know about John Robinson's youth, it was ordinary. He was an Eagle Scout, he loved animals, and uh, got along great with everybody. In fact, uh, when he was a young man, made a trip to England where he sang for the Queen of England. A command performance for Queen Elizabeth at the Palladium in London when he was about 13. And backstage at the Palladium, he ran into Judy Garland. She kissed him on the cheek, and this made a big story in the Chicago papers. In 1964, he was 21 years old, and he met a woman named Nancy Jo Lynch and they would be married for decades and decades. He got a job at a Chicago hospital being an x-ray technician. But instead of doing a lot of x-rays, he started you know, having affairs and stealing money from the hospital. John Robinson got a, a job in the late 60s, I believe, with a Dr. Graham who happened to be Harry Truman's personal physician. He uh, was a very good people person, smiled a lot, uh, gave an excellent first impression, but um, he had another side to him as well. It was found out that he had embezzled $25,000 from Dr. Graham. But uh, we weren't the only ones. He went on to have many, many years of embezzlement and other white collar crimes. He had this long, long career as this con man. If there was a way to con somebody, Johnny Robinson had already thought it through. He's always doing a con. He's always stealing from someone. Time after time, Robinson is caught and convicted for these white collar crimes. But every time, he manages to escape any real significant prison time. 1977, there's a banquet 
uh, in downtown Kansas City at one of the hotels, and they announced that uh, the man of the year was John Robinson for all his great work that he'd done. And it turned out that it was his own invention. Nominated himself, ordered the plaque himself, the whole thing. He made it all up. With a lot of serial killers, you hear the cliche about them living double lives. This guy had five lives. You kind of have to think about his wife and family. They have four children by now, and he's trying to present himself in a very favorable light. He's the referee of his kids' soccer games. He's an elder at the church. I think part of the reason that he was able to get away with it so long was because he didn't look dangerous. He looks more like the Pillsbury Doughboy than he does, you know, the, the chainsaw massacre guy. You know, he's very congenial, he smiles, he laughs, he tells stories, he slaps you on the back. Steve Hames was Robinson's probation officer. He had his eye on Robinson for a long time, knowing that something beyond white collar crime was involved here. There was no doubt in my mind that uh, Robinson was up to, uh, to no good. Open an Olathe North High School yearbook from the early 1980s, you'll see a dark-haired girl with a very bright future. It gets to be 1984, he hires Paula Godfrey. Paula answered an ad in the newspaper for a job. That's where she met Robinson. And she disappears. Her father confronted John Robinson, who totally said, I don't know what you're talking about. All of a sudden, these letters started appearing, signed by his daughter, saying, oh, I'm OK, you know, I'm fine. I just, you know, don't need to worry about me. You're a parent or a sibling, and you've lost contact. And then out of the blue, you get a letter from them. It probably made you feel good, at least initially, that, well, thank you know, they're OK. But then on closer examination, they, they'd often say, well, this doesn't sound like her. John Robinson was a very good predator. He chose his victims well. They were looking for some way out of their poverty and their problems. John Robinson gave it to them. Hugger. I am. Heather also met with Steve Hames. That was a really powerful meeting for her. We ready? Yeah, we're done. All right. You want to start out again? Yeah, I would go with, how did you come across John? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.